Welcome to our lecture online. We're going to end up with have to find the greatest common factor of a couple of numbers. And in order to do that, well, we have to understand what a factor is and what a common factor is. And then we can figure out what the greatest common factor is. So let's start with the question, what is a factor? And the explanation here is that it is a number that evenly divides into another number. For example, if we take the number 36, what are the factors of the number 36? What numbers are there that evenly divide into 36? And it does include the number 1 and itself. In other words, 1 and 36 are factors of 36. But what other numbers fit evenly into 36? Well, since it's an even number, 2 would also be a factor. What other numbers? Well, as you play around with it, you can probably think of the number 6, perhaps, the number 4, the number 9, because all those numbers evenly fit into the number 36. But how can we find all of the factors? What is the technique that we can use to find all the factors of 36? The best way to do that is to start with the number 36 and divide it by the smallest prime number, which is the number 2. When we do that, we get 36 divided by 2, which is 18. Since it's still even, we can continue to divide it by the smallest prime number 2, 18 divided by 2, now it gives us 9. Now 9 is no longer even, so we can now divide it by 2. The next smallest prime number would be 3. That means we can divide 9 by 3. When we do that, we get 3. Which means that 36 can be written as the product of all these factors. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And you can see that the factor 2 repeats. You have two of them. The factor 3 also repeats. Now, once you have all the factors in terms of multiples of the smallest prime numbers that fit into the number 36 evenly, you can now come up with all the other factors by multiplying these together. For example, factors, of course, at this point become 2 and 3 as well as 1 and 36. But when you multiply 2 times 2, you get 4. That is also a factor of 36. 4 goes into 36 evenly. You can multiply 2 times 3, that gives you 6. 6, therefore, is also a factor. So what we're trying to do here is multiply any combination of these numbers, which means we can also multiply 3 times 3. That will also give us a factor, the number 9. And we can multiply 2 times 2 times 3. That's 4 times 3, which is 12, which is also a factor of 36. We can multiply 2 times 3 times 3, which is 18, and that's also a factor of 36. And now we've exhausted all the combinations that we can multiply. Any 2 or 3 or 4 numbers together, remember, when we multiply all of them together, we get 36, which is, as we already know, also a factor of 36. It turns out, then, that all the factors of 36 together are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. Now, a good way to see if you have found all of the factors is to take the outer two numbers, the smallest and the largest number, multiply them together to see if you get 36, which means 1 times 36 gives you 36. How about 2 and 18? Multiply those two together, 2 times 18, that gives you 36. How about the next two? 3 times 12? That gives you 36. How about the next one? 4 times 9? That gives you 36. And now since you only have one number left, multiply it by itself, 6 times 6, that also gives you 36. That shows that you found all of the factors. Now let's go find all the factors of the number 42. We'll use the same technique and see what we get. First of all, you know that 1 and 42 will be the factors. And to find the other factors, you take the number 42 and divide it by the smallest prime number 2. 42 divided by 2 gives me 21. Now that's no longer even, so we can no longer divide 21 by 2. We take the next prime number, 3. 3 goes on to 21, 7. 3 and 7 are prime numbers. That means we're done. Those are all the factors. 2, 3, and 7, therefore, also become factors of 42. 2, 3, and 7. Now we can try to find any of the other combinations by multiplying these factors together. In other words, 2 times 3 gives me 6, 
And that can be, that is also a factor. The numbers 2 times 7, which is 14, it's also one of the factors. Then the next multiplication, 3 times 7, which is 21. And then of course, finally, when you multiply all three of them together, that gives you 42. 2 times 3 times 7, that's 42, but we already have that factor. So the other two are 14 and 21. Now again, to check to see if we found all the factors, let's write them lined up from smallest to largest and see what we get. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 14, 21, and 42. These should be all of the factors of 42. So you may wonder, what if I forgot one of the factors? How does the check tell me that I forgot one of the factors? Well, let's try that. Let's say that we forgot the 6. Somehow we did not do this multiplication and we forgot the number 6. Let's see what we end up with. 1, 2, 3, 7, 14, 21, and 42. Even though all of these are indeed factors of the number 42, we didn't find all of them. We missed the number 6. Let's do our check and see what would happen. Again, you take the first and the last number, multiply them together. 1 times 42 gives me 42. 2 times 21, that gives me 42 as well. 3 times 14, that gives me 42 as well. Now we only have one number left, 7, so we multiply that by itself, 7 times 7. That does not give me 42. Ah, that means I forgot one of my factors, and I have to go back and check my work to see. You go, oh, that's right, I didn't include the number 6. So notice that if you forget a factor and you do the check, you will find out you don't have all of them. That's how that's done.